Today I want to talk about how to get that swirly bokeh effect using some pretty cheap lenses. So maybe you've seen some pictures where they, they have that nice swirly bokeh in the background and you know th those are effects that you can do in Photoshop uh, you know with some filters and things and or you can do it manually yourself by layering pictures and twisting them a little bit but um, you know that's that's a ton of work and the end result I don't think is as natural as you know if you were to do it yourself uh, with one of these cheap lenses um, there are lenses designed sp specifically for that uh, swirly bokeh effect uh, for example I think lens baby has one it's called the twist 60 and it's fine for, you know, Nikon, but it's like, you know, and Canon mount and they have a Sony mount, and then you can adapt it to uh, Micro Four Thirds, but, uh, you know, that's $300. And, you know, th there's another lens called the uh, Petzval lens, and that's, that's a beautiful lens. It's made of all brass, and, and you know, it's got these neat little... Uh, iris things that you drop in for different kinds of bokeh effects but uh that that thing is like i think i saw it for eight hundred dollars I, I i anyway uh i'm not talking anywhere near that kind of money what you want to look for are these little cctv lenses uh they're mostly prevalent on uh, ebay I, I think amazon has them now too but i bought all of mine from ebay and i you know this is a uh 25 millimeter f1.4 cctv lens and you know the uh they're known uh otherwise as c-mount lenses they you know so they come with an adapter ring uh or you know i would highly recommend when you get these get them together with the micro four thirds adapter ring uh because and, and it's purely academic but what i read was these C, C mount lenses came in different uh, thread sizes and different diameters on the other end here. And if you don't get the C mount uh, to Micro Four Thirds lens mount together with the lens, you may not be able to use the lens mounts that you have. Uh, again, it is something I read on Wikipedia uh, and it is purely academic because I've bought three of these lenses and all three of them fit on the same mount. Um, so <clears throat> this one here is my 35 millimeter f1.6. I mentioned this 25 1.4. This is another 35 millimeter uh, f1.7, and I, I don't recommend this one uh, in particular. I recommend getting this one if you can find it. And I'll, I'll put links down below if, if they're still available. I'll take a look after I finish this video. Uh, this this lens I really like, and and I use this 90% of the time. And, you know, just to compare that to my 35 millimeter uh, F2 Zeiss over here, just to give you some, some perspective, you know, the reason these lenses are so small is because they were designed for an even smaller sensor than the Micro Four Thirds. So that's why you can get a really fast, small prime uh, you know, and mount it on here. And, and and that's also the reason you get that swirly bokeh effect because the circle of light that comes out of these is a little bit smaller than the standard Micro Four Thirds lens. And that's that's because, again, it was made for a smaller sensor. And what happens is, is as you go outside of that circle of light, you start seeing all the defects, you know, chromatic aberrations and, and, but that, but that's what causes, uh, that swirly bokeh effect or these imperfections as you start to go outside of that circle of light. And that's why, you know, these lenses are so big is because they're trying to design these to be sharp corner to corner and, you know, for a full frame sensor. And that's not what you want. So that's why these are really uh, kind of neat, uh, because because these lenses were designed for the CCTV cameras, you know, like those ones you see in the banks looking at you and in parking garages. Um, <clears throat> look, look at the mount for this. There's no 
uh, requirement for that flange distance like you see on this adapter here. And once you mount this to your lens, and I never like to take it off, I just don't like the idea of you know this metal grinding and twisting on here, but once you mount it on here, this is just like a native lens uh, for the Micro Four Thirds system. So you can buy a couple of them and never have to change uh, lens mounts. You can just put the lens on. Now for this lens, I also like it because I can put on this uh, lens hood. The coatings on these lenses are just awful. You're going to get flare and ghosting and, and, and all kinds of things other than the swirly bokeh. So if you can put it, get get the lens hood for it. Sometimes they sell it with the lens hood. I've seen you know whole kits lens hood included with the mount. You know for thirty five dollars, uh, which is what I got on this one. But if you saw the intro <clears throat> to this video and to all my videos, this is the lens that I have mounted on the camera on my Pen F. And as you can see, I mean I think it just looks gorgeous on here. And, but that's that's not why I use this lens a lot. I, I like the 35 millimeter focal length and you know the effective 70 millimeter for just my general shooting when I go out walking in the park and stuff. And uh, it's also very very fast. So this is this is a great lens. The next lens I would recommend is this 25 millimeter f 1.4 CCTV lens C mount. Um, I think this is a Fujian, but it may have different names online I don't know it, you know I'll, I'll put a link down to the one that I bought this is like 16 or 20 dollars and then if you get it with the ring adapter it might be like 25 uh, the only problem with this lens you can't put a hood on it uh, it has rings or ribs in here but I think they're just ribs I don't think you can actually put a, a hood on it so you know but it's so small I just put my hand over it like this and that that usually takes care of any kind of flaring that I get. Um, the other thing I did, and I'll, I'll do a close-up over here, is I put a little piece of uh, silver duct tape right here to kind of mark where the aperture is. So that's 1.4 and as I go up, you know, it goes as high as f9 I guess. And the focus ring is very simple, just near and far, and it, you know, which is it pretty much sums it up, right? <laughs> okay, um, so that's that. So let me show you a couple of pictures from each of these lenses. And, you know, for 25 bucks, I mean, these cost less than some of the filters I bought for my other lenses. Um, so, you know, one, one of the first pictures I'm going to show you I took is, is one I took with this lens here. This is um, the 25mm f1.4. And let's see, take a look at this uh, bust of George Washington. I took this at the uh, George Washington Masonic and inside. So if you're doing portraits, you know, you can see the center is very, very sharp. And then as you go out towards the, the background, you start to get a very subtle, subtle swirly bokeh effect. And to get that swirly bokeh effect, you really need to have more trees and twigs and you know you, you really need a messy background and that's when you kind of get the best effect you know a messy background like uh, trees and leaves are, are really good because you get little little bits of light peeking through the leaves and then you got all that busyness and it, it really makes a really nice effect if you look at the uh, uh, lens baby uh, site you know they have some pictures there of their uh, twist 60 lens and you know they're much better photographers than I am but uh, you know you always see them you see the pictures with the uh, hanging uh, Christmas lights and things and to, to really kind of accentuate that swirly bokeh and I you know I don't do things like that but uh, you know these these are actual pictures so this next picture is of a Model T Ford that I took at the uh, National Harbor and they had this thing sitting out there and, and you know you really couldn't ask for a more perfect subject for this kind of lens because this lens gives you kind of that vintage old school you know old camera kind of look naturally right 
And all I did to this picture really is just apply a uh, uh, anti-color, you know, sepia or something, uh, you know, to kind of give it that that uh, vintage look. Um, but the swirly bokeh and everything else was just naturally straight out of camera through this lens. Um, another nice picture I that you know that I like uh, is this one here of a smokehouse. And um, you can see kind of in the background, the trees are just slightly blurred. Uh, and there's a little hint of swirliness kind of going on. So the, the effect with this lens is a little more subtle than with this lens. But again, the center is just really, it's really tack sharp. And I did some tests comparing it directly. This 35 millimeter against my, my Zeiss, you know, 35 millimeter. And in the center, this is virtually a sharp. I mean, you have to pixel peep to like 400% to really see the difference between these two. And, and you know, this one had a little better contrast. Um, and at, at f2, this lens is certainly sharper than this one. This lens here, I have to get down to, and I marked it with just a little uh, a Sharpie. I marked it. But this lens I have to get down to about f2.8 and then I still get that swirly kind of soft bokeh background but you know the contrast and the color really pops right around 2.8. Um, this lens here um, again it's about the same thing around f2 f2.8 the contrast and the color really start to pop but you still get that nice swirly background um, and I'll just show you a couple of more pictures real quick um, for example with this lens the 35 millimeter um, here's like the normal shot of this caterpillar I just happened to catch uh, while I was walking along and um, here's a kind of a my final image I cropped in tilted a little but you can see all the little individual hairs and little strands of that I don't know punk rock kind of thing going on with this caterpillar and I, I was just really amazed with how sharp this lens is and, and you know it's manual focus and everything but um, you know you can focus peak and and just eyeball it zoom in right uh, to get the best sharpness because focus peaking can be just a little off sometimes and you know but that that's that's a whole nother video right okay uh, one or two more uh, I'm going to show you one more that I did using uh, looks like I used this lens again this lens I used wide open at f1.6 for this picture and the reason I point this one out is is if you look closely at the bokeh it's almost got kind of a what they call a soap bubble bokeh where you know the the the, the light is kind of ringed a little bit like a soap bubble and that's that's an effect that you really can only get from really old vintage lenses and I've seen much, much better pictures than I take using, you know, really amplifying that effect. Uh, if I was a better photographer, I could probably get that using this lens, but this is what I could do. But I, I, I show you this picture not so much for that, that bubble bokeh effect, but also because, you know, where else are you going to get a fast prime F35 F1.6 for like $35? This let me shoot this picture, and I, I actually I use this tripod and set it down next to this little flower thing uh, with this lens, and I was able to shoot like at ISO 200 um, at f 1.6, and it was very very dark uh, there, and it, it just wouldn't have been possible without a nice fast prime like this. Uh, so for thirty five dollars, you know, you can really I think expand your uh, photography you know without spending a fortune um, okay and then uh, let me show you one more uh, this is more of a wide landscape shot and using this lens and as you can see the swirly bokeh did not so much in these kind of shots I probably stopped it down it's hard to tell because it doesn't record any of the data but I probably stopped it down to about f4 or f5.6 to get this shot but uh, 
you know, the color, the clarity, uh, the contrast, everything is still really, really good for such a cheap lens. Um, so, you know, let's, let's look at one more. Uh, this one I shot with, uh, again, this lens. Um, that's what I was saying. I really love this lens. Um, in this shot, this is uh, from the George Mason or George Washington Masonic from the steps. And you can kind of look down and see Arlington um, down below, or not Arlington, Alexandria, uh, Virginia. And it almost has sort of a uh, tilt shift lens effect. Uh, you know, kind of looks, makes everything kind of look miniature when you, when you get, take, take a wide shot like that. So, um, that's, that's another reason I love this lens is, is I'm getting sort of a, a depth to the, to the picture that you wouldn't get normally when they're trying to be sharp corner to corner, like most of the primes that you would buy the modern lenses. And, and, you know, I, I feel like for me, it was, uh, it's, it's just a pleasure and joy to use. For my friends, um, they kind of got sick of my swirly bokeh toy camera look. <laughs> and, and when I went out and I shot with like a normal 25 millimeter prime, they were like so happy to see like a normal picture. But so, you know, you can go crazy with it is all I'm saying. Uh, it, it's nice to, even if you're doing this professionally, you know, you're doing portraits or weddings or whatever, if you sprinkle a little bit of these swirly bokeh type effects in, um, they really pop. I mean, they really, uh, I think will add to your portfolio in a way that you, you wouldn't be able to get in other lenses. And, and, and that's, that's, that's the whole point of this is really, I want to help you to kind of expand your photography from, uh, you know, just the normal things that you see where people are telling you to buy the most expensive lens. It's like, whew, my God, did you see, did you see the, the, uh, I don't know. I was looking at a lens for my Nikon, a 105 millimeter. They went like $2,000. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not happening. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, one more quick one of a flower, you know, you can get up real close, uh, similar to the Caterpillar one. Uh, I took that one with this 25 millimeter and you can kind of see the swirly bokeh. Uh, so again, this 25 millimeter has the best swirly bokeh effect uh, over this one, but this one, you still get that effect, but it's a little more subtle. And it, you know, since I can use this hood, I get a little more pop in the pictures with the contrast and stuff. And with this one, you know, if you're in a shaded area, like with this other picture, uh, you'll be fine. Or like I said, you can just put your hand. So anyway, uh, when you put these lenses on, just one more tip is to go ahead and program if you have a pen F or uh, OMD M5 Mark II or the new EM1s, uh, you can program the, um, the EXIF data in to, to name these lenses as well as uh, tune the um, image stabilization, sorry about that tune the image stabilization to work with the camera. So now you have an image stabilized, you know, 25 millimeter F 1.4 prime. And I have a video that I made uh, before this one. I'll put a link down below on how you program and tune and adapt lenses to work with the Pen F or any uh, OMD camera practically. Okay, that's it. Uh, basically, uh, if you like this video, uh, go ahead and hit the like button down below. It lets me know you guys are watching and I really appreciate it. Um, I plan on making some more videos uh, with some of my experiences, uh, particularly the ones where you can save a few bucks and still get some pretty neat things going on. Uh, like I, I want to talk about this, this stupid strap uh, in another video maybe. But in any case, uh, go ahead and subscribe if, if you want to see some more videos from me. Um, but get out there and shoot, okay? Thank you for watching.